Hello? Can anyone see me? <laughs> okay, I guess that's the answer. I'm Antonio Beeler, and I'm the one who's going to be doing the uh, Why Homeschooling is the Future of the Liberty Movement. But I'm getting a lot of background, so I'm going to have to cut this out. Hmm. So unfortunately, I didn't um, uh, previously uh, try to set up my channel or do any practice with this until this morning, or well, at last night, and it's been uh, it's been difficult. But I think I finally got it, and I guess that <laughs> yes, love the Ron Paul supporters. So I can go ahead and wait until 10, which is two minutes from now, or I can start right now. It doesn't doesn't really make uh, much of a difference to me. Happy to get going. Let's make sure that everything's turned down. Okay, so my name is Antonio Beeler, and I will try to do the best that I can here. Um, I am technically illiterate, or um, technolog technologically illiterate. Um, so I have two screens open. One is, uh, you know, my main screen, and then one is for the uh, chat. So I may not actually uh, get um, immediate uh, responses out to anything that you guys actually post. But my name is Antonio Beeler. I am the founder of Beeler Education. It is uh, my effort to help help parents and help society move towards homeschooling and unschooling, and to help uh, to essentially help um, you know children achieve all that they can, and at the same time undermine uh, sort of the status uh, system that we have in America, which uh, much of it emanates from the uh, public schooling system. Now. I, I just want to say that I'm going to talk a lot about homeschooling and unschooling, uh, you know, but there's many different forms of alternative education. Uh, what I consider most important is that children are out of the public ed uh, education system. Preferably they get out of traditional education altogether because traditional education is a very coercive uh, uh, institution that really destroys intellectual vitality, independence. Um, and uh, creativity, uh, but the uh, most important thing that we must do is go ahead and end the public schooling system. Uh, but that can't be done overnight, uh, but what can be done overnight is homeschooling, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, the first thing uh, that I'll go into is essentially what a failure traditional schooling is, or what uh, a failure public schooling is. Um, for those of you who are on this uh, are on this forum, there's no doubt that you guys all, uh, or most of you, I assume, believe that public education, as well as all public institutions, are inherently flawed. Uh, they exist uh, by way of violence and coercion, um, but they also fail in the delivery of the goods or services that they claim to uh, to want to provide, and and in the process they create a lot of cronyism and a lot of waste and fraud, waste and abuse, um, but they don't actually deliver education very well. 
But when it comes to traditional schooling, um, you know, the numbers are pretty, uh, pretty compelling. You know, we have a system in America today where 22% of the people who actually graduate high school, this doesn't even include the people who drop out, 22% of Americans uh, who graduate high school are functionally illiterate by the time that they graduate. That essentially means that they can perhaps read uh, basic signs, they can read um, what's uh, on a TV, uh, but they can't read the, uh, the user's manual to the TV. Uh, they can't. Uh, they they can't. Um, you know, read and comprehend a very simple text. USA Today, for example, is a very very simple paper. It's written, uh, you know, well below a twelfth grade level uh, because it's tailored towards uh, the average American. And uh, and about one fifth of American high schoolers can't even read USA Today very well by the time that they graduate. Uh, that doesn't include 30 percent of children who don't graduate uh, from public high schools. So, uh, you know, the statistics say that essentially there's 10 percent of the population that is dropping out, but that's not true. It's more along the lines of 30 percent. It's much like our unemployment figures where uh, the government massages the numbers to try to hide what's really going on. But 30 percent of the children who go in the, into the education system don't come out of it. And so we really have about a 70 percent graduation rate. Uh, this is pretty interesting considering that we actually pay the uh, second most per child in the world for uh, public education. We're second only to Switzerland and there's no doubt that we're going to surpass them here very quickly uh, <laughs> because uh, as bad as Switzerland is when it comes to education, they, they do tend to get a lot of things right and, uh, and, and uh, they, they're not as uh, corrupt uh, as we are as a, uh, you know, our public institutions. But, uh, you know, despite the fact that we spend the second most per child in the world, we also, um, you know, just do very, very poorly by almost all metrics when we compare ourselves to the rest of the world. Not that the rest of the world is the standard, because unfortunately the rest of the world uh, also deals in coercive education. They're just a little bit less corrupt than we are. but. We tend to uh, fluctuate somewhere between uh, the middle of the pack and the bottom third of the pack on all uh, of the international testing um, for industrialized, uh, advanced, developed economies. But of the 70% uh, who um, go to college, only about uh, about 50 of those, about half of those, um, actually, well that's 70% of the 70% who graduate, so we have about 50% of the, of the high school kids in the country going to college and half of those kids have to take remedial courses just to take the introductory courses once they get to college and these are overwhelmingly kids who go to public schools not kids who are going to private schools or kids who are going uh, to homeschooling uh, or, or uh, various other alternative uh, means and then even for those who are able to go ahead and take those introductory courses um, about half, only half of the uh, people who go into college are able to graduate in four years um, not all of them will even graduate in six years, uh, but almost all of them come out with considerable debt and no skills. Um, but you know, I'm not going to sit here and harp on the uh, failures of public education. I think that uh, we all uh, realize what the, the failings of public education is. I'm here to talk about homeschooling and uh, why it's the future of liberty movement. Um, I will definitely get back to the questions uh, eventually. Uh, but I don't have someone here who's helping me, so I, I, I'll have to jump back and forth. But um, you know, why why is it that homeschooling is so uh, important to the liberty movement? Well, the first thing that we have to recognize is that uh, traditional schooling, or public schooling, is uh, you know uh, at its very core opposed to the ideals of liberty and opposed to the uh, uh, opposed to a free society. It is a, it's a system that relies on the, the forced uh, collection of taxes uh, from the people against their will to funnel it into a system that works for the, uh, for, the, for the gain of the adults in the system and the politicians and the special interests and the publishers and it works against the children. Um, this is a very beneficial thing for the government because you know, traditional schooling at its, you know, essentially is an indoctrination center. It dumbs down and desensitizes our children. It, it teaches them that being bullied 
is a part of life. It teaches them that you know personal space and property rights and an individual respect is something that you know isn't meant uh, for children and isn't meant for citizens in in the society. The uh, two-party system relies on a dumbed-down populace. It, it, uh, the populace can't comprehend why a central bank and inflation are harmful to them. It can't understand why deficits are bad and how they restrict future prosperity, how they increase future taxes. Uh, they don't understand how our foreign policy uh, is not as convoluted as they may think, um, but you know there is an objective to it, and that objective uh, tends to revolve around corporate, special, and foreign interests. Um, they just believe in, in the fairy tales that they're told about American exceptionalism. Um, I am teaching part-time at a, at a local school here in Austin. I'm in Austin, Texas, and uh, it's primarily homeschoolers and unschoolers that come in for these, uh, for these uh, modular type lessons, almost like a co-op. And uh, you know, it's, it's interesting talking to these children. These kids are primarily 7th and 8th grade. Uh, but when I talk to them about American history, they're they're always quite surprised. Uh, they're, they're always quite surprised as to uh, the real history of America, whether it is the the Native Americans, whether it is uh, slavery, whether it is the internment of the Japanese, uh, the nuclear bomb, uh, the false false flag attempts, you know, all that stuff. Um, you know, but. The public schools, they all teach us about how great the pilgrims were, how great Abraham Lincoln was, you know, how great FDR was, and how great the Great Society was. They, they, don't, they don't allow children to really question what's going on. Um, if you ask questions um, you know, about the contradictions of public officials and the corruption of government, um, it becomes very clear that uh, that's not acceptable and that essentially uh, such views are extremist and unpatriotic. Um, so, you know, I, like I said, I don't want really to get into uh, too deeply why public education is such a failure. There's no question that it is. I want to focus on why homeschooling is the future liberty, liberty movement and how we and how we can move forward. Let me just check the uh, the comments that you guys have said to, thus far. If uh, if I missed anything, why don't you uh, why don't you just go ahead and repost it? So um, um, because. Because uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, uh, not being, I'm not able to keep up with it. Um, but uh, you know, before I go into that, let me just say who I am. And I probably should have done this at the beginning. My name is Antonio Beeler. Um, I am focused on homeschooling. I am a former statist. Uh, I am sad to say. I am also a product of the public education system. I uh, went to a public high school in Pennsylvania. I went to West Point, the United States Military Academy, which is uh, perhaps one of the most evil and uh, statist organizations out there uh, has good people that go through it, people who go in with noble intentions, but uh, the end result of uh, West Point is to create people who are loyal to the state and not loyal to liberty. And uh, the outcomes of what has happened at West Point are pretty much irrefutable. Um, you know, the, the people who go in there, when they rise up to power, they work against our liberties and you know all the generals in the Pentagon are living proof of that including uh, as well as the uh, West Pointers who are in Congress such as Senator Jack Reed. Um, so I went to West Point. I got stationed in Germany. I, I was Airborne Ranger qualified. Then I was uh, deployed to Kosovo and I was deployed to Iraq and I did it because I thought that I was being a, a very proud American. I was defending liberties. I came over uh, to um, uh, um, Iraq and I did my thing. I did a very, very good job. Uh, I was very proud of myself. I came back and then, uh, you know, I went to business school at Stanford and then I went into, <laughs> then I went to Wall Street where I worked in investment banking and then I did private equity. So, uh, you know, please just hang, hang with me here, everyone. Don't just, uh, don't just, uh, you know, hang up on me quite yet just because of my background. Um, I, I eventually did come to embrace liberty. Um, and uh, it, it was a long path, but I didn't do it because uh, because of the public education system or what I learned at West Point. It was a lot of uh, self-education, uh, you know, uh, and and asking questions and having my beliefs challenged by other liberty lovers, and then coming to eventually realize that that the path that I was down going down just uh, just wasn't going to cut it. Um,
Okay, good, good. I'm glad that there's no questions yet. I, I, I've, I've been kind of uh, kind of worried that I was missing out on them. Okay, so uh, you know there are 52 million children in public schools with 9 million uh, public school employees. Those are all people that are paid uh, with confiscated tax dollars. You know, how do we, uh, as liberty lovers, uh, fight uh, what what is essentially um, you know a very violent society here in the United States? Uh, there's been some great talks that have uh, gone on over the past uh, two days, um, you know, that that attacks, you know, how we attack the system, um, you know, and I believe there's a lot of great ways to do it. I know that there's a lot of people out there who think that politics is not the answer. Um, I personally, uh, you know, tend to tend to agree, um, although I am a, a pretty rabid supporter of Ron Paul this election. Um, but uh, you know, if he doesn't win, you know, I I, I can almost see myself, uh, you know, just you know, becoming completely uh, uh, anarchist. But I'll I'll give it a good try through 2012. Um, but uh, you know, with with nine million public uh, employees and and 52 million children who are part of the public school system, uh, that is a really really big hurdle for liberty lovers. It's 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 a it's a huge hurdle for us uh, to live in a free society. Uh, fortunately, there are two million homeschool kids and about two thirds of a million uh, families who homeschool. And it's a lot easier to homeschool today than it was uh, even 20 years ago. Back, the people who were homeschooling, and there might even be some people on the call uh, right now who homeschool back in the 80s. That was that was when it was really fringe. That was when it was really uh, crazy. You know, there were only 50,000 homeschoolers. Uh, in the in the mid 80s, um, and now there's over two million. Uh, the people in the 70s who did it were were even uh, more spectacular. They were often the uh, counterculture revolutionaries, the ones who were uh, opposed to the Vietnam War and, and our foreign policy. Um, you know, and the, then in the 80s, a lot of it was uh, religious. Uh, you know, people who were doing it for religious reasons. Um, but but they they were the uh, they were the uh, the people who were leading the charge. They were the ones who were uh, opting out of the system. And that is essentially uh, the way that we're going to bring liberty uh, back to America um, or to whatever is left uh, of this place. Um, you know, as long as we have people who believe that the government is there to protect them and to help them, as long as we have uh, 10 million, nearly 10 million uh, public workers who uh, you know, feed off of the system, and uh, you know, uh, millions and millions and millions of parents who think that they're getting a good deal out of this, you know, it, there, there's a problem. But fortunately, uh, public education is such a terrible product that people are fleeing the public education system, and they're fleeing into homeschooling, and they're fleeing into private schools. And what we need is we need a critical mass. Uh, I think that I forget who said it, but you know, when 10% of the population believes something, that that's that's when a revolution happens. You know, we are at uh, about 4% of the homeschool market, and it's only going to accelerate here, uh, or 2% or 4% uh, of the education market is homeschoolers, and it's only going to accelerate here as uh, people uh, realize what a failure the system is, and as more and more people reject the system. Uh, more and more people are going to uh, you know, follow along. It, it's uh, unfortunately in this society we have a lot of sheep, and they will only do something once uh, something is popular. Um, but the uh, arguments for homeschooling are quite compelling, and uh, and once that happens, it, it, it's going to be pretty remarkable. And when people go ahead and reject it in mass, that is going to be uh, proof positive that rejecting the system. Is a superior alternative. It's uh, that the system does not help you. It's going to be uh, exhibit number one. Right now, there's still too many people in America who fundamentally believe that public education is something that's good for America. That it's something that helps children and that helps the economy. And that although it's extremely expensive, it's worth it. And there's many people who believe that we should, you know, even spend more money on it. Um, you know, so. The, the more people that we get to, to, to homeschool, uh, the quicker we'll get to, this, uh, to an understanding in society that public institutions are not necessarily good, that they are inefficient, and that they harm people. All right, I, there's, just <laughs> there's just too much going on here. I, I will get to the questions eventually. Um, so, uh, you know, 
I don't know who's out there who is thinking about homeschooling, who wants to be an advocate for homeschooling, whose children have already grown up, who are thinking about uh, homeschooling in the future. Um, so I'm not going to be able to tailor this to everyone. Um, but you know, even if you're not going to homeschool, you should uh, consider uh, being a supporter and an advocate of homeschooling because this is where I think uh, the liberty movement is going to make the most traction. I'm, I'm a huge Ron Paul supporter. I think that what he's been doing over the past uh, 35 years has been huge and, and he's introduced a ton of people to the ideas of liberty even though there's probably anarchists on here who think that you know he's, he's still a statist. Um, but uh, you know, at the end of the day he has, he has brought tons of people into the liberty movement. I think that the only thing that is really going to trump that um, other than a rebel, you know, uh, an economic collapse and, and, and a, a real revolution is, is, the, uh, is, the, is the mass migration away from public schooling. And the question is, well, how do we do it? Um, well, one, all of us need to become advocates and we need, to, we need to understand the statistics. We need to be able to talk. We need to be able to attack, uh, you know, the false uh, talking points and you know I can serve as a resource for you for that um, and uh, there are other people who who can do that as well there's a school sucks podcast that's out which is which is fabulous um, that, I, that I listen to every once in a while that's something that you guys might want to check out you guys can check out my website BeelerEducation.com um, that is a uh, it's just my blog uh, I, I spend most of my time uh, focusing on homeschooling unschooling and attacking the public education system um, on there, I have lots of statistics um, that, that you can use to uh, try to talk people, talk sense into people, explain to people why public education is a failure, why homeschooling is such a great alternative, um, and, and why they, they should not just reflexively uh, reject it just because that's what they're being told to do by their political party or you know, by, by uh, teachers unions or whatnot. Um, one of the critical things uh, to think about when we talk about homeschooling with people is not that we, we say that um, if you don't homeschool your kid, you're a bad parent. Like that's the, probably the worst thing that you can do because then people get really, really defensive. Um, what, what you should say is that homeschooling doesn't work for everyone, but for who it works for, it's definitely a superior alternative. And then you can go ahead and pepper them with the statistics. You know, you can go ahead and attack this notion, well, what about the poor? The poor would be hurt the most. You know, that's absolutely false, completely not true. I can talk about that later on if, if you guys want to talk about it. You know, but, but we can talk about, you know, well, what if their parents are uneducated? Complete, it's completely not true. But, um, you know, but we need to go ahead and focus on, you know, why homeschooling is a good option for some people and why it's a superior option for some people and get them to accept that, you know. Not many people would sit here and say, "Well, going to elite prep schools such as uh, Andover or Exeter, you know, is bad." You know, people often say that homeschooling is bad. They they throw out the socialization excuse or whatever. You know, but no one ever says that about Exeter or Andover that costs thirty thousand dollars a year to go to. You know, everyone sort of acknowledges that Andover and Exeter are superior alternatives to public education. They just they also acknowledge that it's not for everyone. Some people can't afford it. Some people don't want their kids going off to boarding school. That's all fine. That's what we need to. That's how we need to approach homeschool, uh, homeschooling. Uh, people who oppose homeschooling. We talk about the the benefits of homeschooling, and then we tell you know, and then we say it's not for everyone. They say it's not for everyone. Not everyone can homeschool. My response is absolutely true. Not everyone can homeschool. I doubt that more than 20% of the population can homeschool. That's what I always what I always tell them. I think it's a little bit higher. But uh, the, the critical thing is, is once 20% of the population leaves the public education system, the public aid education system collapses you know, because no one will want to be in it because of the, uh, the failures will become so obvious and the su success of the people who leave it will become so obvious that, that not even the, you know, the poorest people in the inner city who's, who have this uh, distorted belief that they need to send their kids to school to, you know, for them to, to do well in life will, will want to stick in it anymore. You know, so so that, that that's the path that we have to go down. I'm going to read the questions real quick. I'm going to start talking. Uh, the ne next topic I'm going to talk about is essentially, uh, you know, why the homeschoolers, the kids who are being homeschooled, are the next uh, generation of uh, you know liberty activists and, and how they're going to lead the liberty movement. But I just want to see if anyone has anything that they want to talk about real quick right now. If and if you can just repost uh, your questions, that'd be great because I'm going to just start from the very end. 
Okay, so Joseph Donnelly, um, you know, how about the neighborhood schools, you know, parents uh, sharing homeschool work? I'm a huge, huge advocate of that, you know. I don't think homeschooling uh, needs to be one mother uh, teaching her three kids at home everything from, you know, basic uh, colors and numbers all the way up through algebra and chemistry. It's, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's not always the best option and all of us, I mean, I, I assume most of us are, are very, very uh, strong proponents of the free market and division of labor and specialization and, you know, um, God love the mothers and fathers who go out there and learn uh, what they're teaching their kids before they teach it or, uh, you know, who are enabling their kids to learn. But, you know, sometimes, yeah, you, you might need uh, a really savvy uh, instructor who can help uh, decipher what's going on in calculus or what's going on you know, in, in, in the uh, deconstruction of a certain uh, literary piece from the 18th century. Um, you know, and and quite frankly, you know, if, if you can bring three or four parents together and each one focuses in on a certain aspect of uh, of what uh, they want to teach um, or, or what, you know, the children, uh, you know, want to learn, then I think that's great. That's sort of what I'm doing at this uh, local school in Austin. You know, the idea isn't that, uh, that we're trying to create a... Uh, a school environment for them. We're just creating something to supplement their education and I'm focusing on, on history which is very interesting. Um, talking to talking to children about real history. Uh, I'm, I'm doing math and I'm doing Socratic dialogue and you know uh, and, and this can be done anywhere. It doesn't need to be done you know through a, a formal school. You know this can be done out of kitchens and, and living rooms um, within your neighborhood. Absolutely. So I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, okay, you're, uh, I'm going to answer Oliver's point about homeschooling having a religious isolationist image, and that is absolutely true. It does have that image, and that's, that, but that's changing. It's changing very quickly. Um, you know, now that more and more parents are understanding the, uh, the huge benefits of homeschooling uh, from an educational perspective, uh, from a socialization uh, perspective, from an anti-bullying, anti-violence, uh, morality perspective, you know, it, it's no longer about religion and while the stereotype does exist it is disappearing very very quickly um, some of the uh, the most uh, rabid homeschoolers these days are actually superintendents and, and teachers you know in the public education system who uh, you know they, they, they feed at the system you know they, they, they allow their paycheck to come through a system that uh, fundamentally uh, or not fundamentally but essentially destroys the lives of children you know, but at the same time, you know, their spouse is back at home homeschooling because they, they know that, that homeschooling is the best option uh, for their kids. So we just need to attack it. It's growing very, very quickly. People are, are leaving uh, the public school, traditional uh, course of school system uh, for many reasons. My next talk, which is going to be on Channel 2, is about getting into Harvard as a homeschooler. Not for everyone, but, uh, you know, but if that's the approach that parents are taking to their education, um, the children do very, very well uh, when they go into homeschooling, and and those are more more of the reasons why to do it. Um, it's not about religion anymore, and people who who say that are being extremely disingenuous, or they're just uh, ignorant and they're relying on on a, you know sort of uh, old stereotypes. Okay, I'm going to uh, answer this question from Joseph. We, you know, what products and services are most needed to help homeschooling families? Um, this is actually something that I've been working on. Um, I've been working on identifying uh, individual learning styles of children um, so that parents can go ahead and tailor their education uh, to their child's learning needs. Um, but that's not even necessary to provide a superior education to uh, children relative to what they would get out of the public school system. The number one thing about education, and, you know, the number one thing about uh, you know having a good education is essentially having uh, an environment where learning is love, where you know, where there, there's there's enjoyment around learning, and it's not a coercive, negative experience. You can you can force a kid to learn to read. You can sit him down and beat him over the head time and time again until he learns how to read a very simple book. But if you do that, he's not going to read for enjoyment for the rest of his life. And, and you've just defeated the entire purpose. 
you can beat him over the head for 12 years and, and force him to learn algebra and get him to get a good grade in the, you know, good score on the SAT and go to a decent college. But once he gets into college and he's away from you, um, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna fail out or he's gonna fumble along and he's never gonna realize what it is that he's meant to do in this world. And he's going to, uh, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna just stumble through life, you know, and, and that's obviously not, not, you know, not what we're looking for. Um, you know, so so the most important thing is just that you know parents who want to homeschool they just need to create an environment where learning can be fun, where it's not mean and coercive. You know, the probably the best resource that you can have as a homeschooler is a library card. You know, just being able to go down to the library um, and just look, you know, take out books and read. You know, reading is probably the most important thing that these uh, children need uh, to lead successful lives. You know, you want them to become uh, self-taught. You want them to be able to identify uh, identify things that they don't have the answers to that they want the answers to and then they go ahead and read about it they research it and and then you enable them to learn uh, I'm not a fan of, of curriculum products uh, I think that some curriculum products are great but the problem with uh, curriculum products is that you know it's sort of like public schools at home in a workbook or, or on your computer you know it's not tailored to any individual child it's tailored to you know the average child that they can go ahead and make a lot of money off of you know by selling in bulk you know ideally what we should get to is uh, you know enough information about learning styles and enough information about the various cur curriculum providers that given a particular need of a particular child that has a learning type of a certain uh, a certain learning type then for where they're at they might use this curriculum product you know, which costs this much money at this time. But for a different topic, a different subject, you know, they could be at a completely different grade level and they might need to use a completely different curriculum product. You know, um, I'm also a huge fan of unschooling. Uh, I, th I think that most people who become homeschoolers, you know, gradually uh, shift towards unschooling because unschooling, you know, is, is where the child, you know, loves learning so much that, that they're seeking out knowledge and they're teaching themselves. and and that's what you, what's really needed uh, in, in a very dynamic, uh, knowledge-based society. Um, you know, and for those children, you know, the last thing you need is curriculum products. You, know, you might need to get them um, some basic textbooks so they can teach themselves, but they certainly don't need to be going through a standard curriculum. So uh, you know, that's not an answer that most people like to hear. Most people just want to answer, well, is a Becca books or you know, what, what, what exactly is my best option? But, but your best option is actually to avoid all the curriculum products and figure out what your child needs at a given time and then tailor that education uh, you know towards them and it, and it can be much much uh, it can be done much cheaper uh, than by going to a homeschool convention and, and just buying up you know uh, curriculum products that cost hundreds of dollars Okay, Greg, uh, I, I like your point about homeschooling through 8th grade and then dumping them into the public education system. Uh, that's interesting. Um, I think that that's sacrificial though, <laughs> so um, I'm not so sure that I would ever advocate it. You know, one thing about uh, teaching them at home and then putting them into a public education system is that once they go into a public education system, they do destroy their, their peers. You know, they, they're just so far ahead uh, when it comes to critical thinking, when it comes to intellectual curiosity, when it comes to you know just basic cognitive skills, um, so yeah, if you did that, you know chances are quite good that they're going to rise to the top of the class and, and they'll get great grades, um, you know. But that isn't necessarily what's best for them, and I'll talk about that in my next segment, um, you know, on on how how to get a homeschooling child into Harvard. Um, but there's a lot, a lot of negatives of going to a, a public school. From uh, you know the socialization aspect is the worst. Everyone talks about how you know well, how will kids how will homeschoolers get socialized? The <laughs> the socialization that goes on in public schools is far worse than anything. You know even the you know some of the worst examples of socialization in homeschooling because they're they're being taught that you know that they need to bow down to authority. And I think that almost everyone here cannot stand you know just being you know just giving undue deference to to authority. You know just because someone has a badge or a title. Um, they're being taught that violence is okay, uh, you know, both directly and indirectly. Um, bullying is, is such a big issue there. 
um, you know, uh, you know, I mean, drugs, sex, all those things, you know, things that, in if if the child were living a free um, life where they were actually trying to improve themselves and get better, a lot of these things that are such a big deal in public schools just aren't a, as big of a deal, you know, in regular society. You know, you don't you're not joining cliques and uh, joining in with people who who don't have any direction in life and, and, and who believe that their parents or the government's going to take care of them for the rest of their lives who are trying to convince them you know if they're out being uh, independent uh, individuals that uh, that they need to be taking drugs or they or that they need to be you know engaging in bullying or, or, or dressing certain ways it's just public schools sending them in public schools even for high school I think is is a really dangerous thing to do uh, with your child maybe with other kids children but but not with mine Yeah, um, well, as far as athletics, I think that athletics is the one, actually one of the very few arguments for public schooling, um, and, and it's an argument that I don't necessarily agree with, um, but, you know, there are a couple sports out there that if your child's really talented, that it might make sense for them to go to a, a traditional school, one of which is football, just because you need, you need the infrastructure around it. Like you can do track, you can do basketball. You know, you can do uh, rowing and fencing, you know, um, you know, even hockey. There's a lot of sports that you can do that you don't need to be in traditional schools and you can still get to the Olympics or you can still get to the pros and get, you know, Division One scholarships. Um, but football is a little bit more challenging. And, and if your child is really passionate about football and loves football and has the uh, ability to be really, really good at it, I can see the argument for it. Fortunately, a lot of states, um, you know, homeschooling advocates have been great. I'm not a big fan of of arguing for favors for homeschoolers through the legislature because that opens opens the door to being regulated and being controlled and 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 you know getting approvals and all that. But uh, in a lot, of, you know, Tennessee had a huge issue with this. North Carolina just had an issue with this. Indiana had an issue with this. You know, do you allow children who are in the public? to go to public schools on an a la carte basis for things that you know they can't get through their homeschooling experience such as football and uh, you know it, it the, the US government um, you know and the state and local governments really screwed the pooch in the 80s they could have worked really hard to outlaw homeschooling and make it essentially a crime sort of like it is to a degree in Germany but they just let it be and they let these people who they thought would never become anything of significance, they let these 50,000 uh, homeschoolers continue to homeschool. And then as, a, as it's grown, now you have 2 million people and homeschoolers are far more likely to get active you know, in, in politics you know, and, and, and uh, lobby and whatnot. And now they're in a situation where, where they, can't, they can't push back anymore. They, they can try to rein it in, but they, they can't stop homeschooling. And, uh, a lot of school districts, a lot of states are being essentially forced to allow homeschoolers to compete on athletic teams. Tim Tebow being probably one of the most famous examples of someone who was able to compete at a public school even though he was homeschooled. Um, he, he won the Heisman Trophy National Championship at Florida and now he's uh, a quarterback for the Denver Broncos. Uh, okay, it, I haven't been able to keep up. Uh, Victoria says people aren't convinced by something just uh, by being told that it is true, I, I don't, I don't know exactly uh, what that is in reference to. Um, when it comes to homeschooling and talking to people, uh, you know, we have numbers. You know, the, the great thing about homeschooling is, you know, we have we have proof positive that homeschooling works. We have higher test scores. We have, you know, okay, I'll, I'll talk about what what my next point was. You know, the, the homeschooling is the future of the liberty movement, and I don't mean that homeschooling is going to open open up you know a, a free society on its own but it's going to create the next generation of liberty lovers I don't know how everyone here came to become an advocate of liberty mine was a pretty tortured path I mean I was as status as they came I I believe that we dropped bombs on Japanese to save American lives I believe that you know World War II was was necessary to stop the spread of Hitler you know I thought that Iraq was a noble war because Saddam Hussein was an evil person you know, I went to West Point of all places. You know, I, I had my education paid for, and then I went and deployed to Kosovo and Iraq for the U.S. Army. You know, so so uh, you know, I, I, I was as hardcore as it came. Um, 
you know, I, I was always, I always viewed myself as an economic, fiscally conservative, socially uh, liberal uh, Republican. Uh, but you know, in 2008, I actively campaigned for John McCain. I went to Pennsylvania and knocked on doors in Montgomery County uh, in the days leading up to the election. You know, so uh, you know, up until 2008, I, I was, I was, <laughs> I was not uh, someone who was an independent thinker. Um, for me to come into the liberty movement, it took it took a lot of self-reflection. It took a lot of uh, you know disappointment about what happened in 2008. Disappointment, you know, in uh, in 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 what the country had become. And then I eventually realized I was disappointed in myself for uh, buying into this notion that I needed to support the Republicans in order to fight off the Democrats when essentially they're the same thing. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. I realized that. Um, you know, but uh, you know, I, I started reading Ayn Rand. I know some of you probably love her, some of you probably hate her, but I, I started reading Ayn Rand. I started watching Ron Paul videos. You know, and things just started clicking, and then I started doing my own research for a change. And even though I have a uh, a resume that looks good to the uh, average person, you know, with West Point and Stanford and all that, my education didn't begin until 2009. I've read more books in the past uh, two and a half years than I read my entire life, and. Uh, you know, people think that you have to be able to, uh, they, that there are certain things that you need to do to get into these schools, and, you know, to a degree it's true, but, you know, a lot of it just came down to the fact that I was really good with numbers and I had a good memory, you know, but, but my real education began in 2009, uh, and I don't know how you guys came to, to accept the ideals of liberty, but I'm guessing that most of us here, you know, didn't have parents who were, who were voluntarists or, or libertarians. Um, most of you guys stumbled upon liberty in some way as well. It's certainly not being taught in schools. It's not being taught, you know, when, when, when we say the Pledge of Allegiance in school, we're not being taught to think for ourselves. Um, you know, the, the, the history that we're taught is complete bunk. You know, so how do we create a new generation of liberty lovers? You know, who are the ones who are going to lead the movement uh, going forward? And I think without question, you know, I believe it's going to be the homeschoolers. It's, it, you know, homeschoolers are independent thinkers. They, they don't they don't buy into a fairy tale just because you say it's true, um, you know. And they're much more likely to become entrepreneurs. Uh, I think one out of every three homeschoolers owns his own business, his or her own business. So they create value, they employ people, they have resources, they're independent, they're not dependent on the state. There was a study that was done not too long ago where they they, they looked at a bunch of homeschoolers, um, you know, compared to the the regular population where uh, a huge proportion of populations on food stamps or or uh, unemployment or other type of uh, social welfare not a single person that they identified uh, in the homeschooling uh, uh, group was on any form of social welfare you know and that's that's pretty remarkable homeschoolers are far more politically active you know so they get involved much more often they lobby you know they uh, they, 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 they stand up to the state when the state's trying to uh, take away their liberties. Um, you know, they, they're mar far more likely to uh, get involved in acts of civil disobedience. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and they just ask questions. And they're a lot more, uh, well, they're better read. Uh, and and, uh, and they, they just have a way of, of uh, you know, seeing through the, the garbage because they were never indoctrinated. They, they were never taught that they had to buy into uh, what other people said just because other people were, were experts. So the children, um, the homeschool children are the future of the liberty movement. Uh, that is where uh, this country is going and, and I think that uh, you know, we, we really need to uh, help uh, homeschoolers to the best of our ability. If, if you're a parent uh, and, and you're unsure about homeschooling, contact me. Um, I, I will talk to you about homeschooling. Uh, you know, ad nauseum. Um, I, I am a huge advocate. I'll talk to you for free. I'm not even not trying to make money off it or anything. You know, if you are concerned about whether or not homeschooling is right for you, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you a, a million reasons why homeschooling, uh, you know, is probably the best option for you. Um, but uh, the next talk that I'll be talking on channel two, getting your kid in the Harvard, is gonna, is going to go into that a little bit more. Okay, Victoria, fourth time. What would you say to people who worry about lack of socialization for their children if they homeschool them, which they believe they can get in the public school system? You know, my standard response is, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, you know, the kids are being socialized in the public schools. You know, where on earth, you know, would my kid ever learn to 
you know, pull a girl's hair or snap her bra. Where on earth would my kid learn that insulting our people is cool? Where on earth would my kid learn that, you know, smoking cigarettes, you know, after school when they're when they're in seventh grade is awesome? Where on earth would my kid learn that talking back to their to their parents, it, you know, is what true independence is? You know, it's it just like this idea of socialization is ridiculous. You know, I mean, just because you 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 throw a kid into a room with 30 kids and, and and you know they go to schools where they're not even allowed to talk at lunch you know and and uh, you know the only socialization that they get with the other kids is three minutes going between classes I mean it, it's it's just simply not I mean it, it, it it's just another fairy tale that that's created by people to justify you know a broken system you know homeschoolers are out there interacting every day with adults you know uh, when when they grow up and they go out into the work world, they're not going to be surrounded by people who are 12 years old. They're going to be surrounded by adults and, and they're going to be expected to act like adults and, and perform in society, provide value to other people uh, in exchange for, for value. And you know, they don't get that in public schools. You know, if, they're, if, if you want to give your kid a superior education, if you want your kid to become an independent person and you still believe in this myth you know, that they need to be socialized, well then, you know, join them up. Join them up in some organization. You know, join them up in some after-school program like the boys club or something. And let them run around and beat up other kids. You know, and and then they can get their socialization that way. It's a. Uh, it's simply not. It's simply not a, a valid argument. And even if it were, you know, the point of education isn't socialization. <laughs> so, you know, if, if you want to emphasize socialization, just find ways to socialize your kids. You know, without sacrificing their education. That's that's my answer. Does anyone else have um, another question for me? Mm, doesn't look like it. Okay. All right. Um, well, if there are no more questions for me, I'll just go ahead and plug myself here really quick. Um, you guys can all contact me on uh, on Facebook and friend me. Um, I would love to uh, uh, be friends with you. If you are anti Ron Paul, uh, you know, I'll just go ahead and give you a warning that you might not want to friend me because I'm always posting about Ron Paul. Um, but uh, you know, if you still want to see what I'm saying about uh, homeschooling, you can go ahead and follow my. Uh, web page for uh, Beeler Education on Facebook as well. You can look at my, uh, my, my blog, which I'm typing right now, BeelerEducation.com. You can follow me on Twitter at BeelerEd, um, and, and I'll go ahead and post that here in a minute as well. And, uh, and like I said, I'm a huge, I mean, I love liberty lovers. I'm doing, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing this because, you know, I believe in liberty. Um, I'm a huge advocate of, of real education for children. Um, you can look at my bio on my website, uh, which which will probably make that very very clear. Uh, but when it comes to liberty lovers, when it comes to people on this forum, um, you know, I just want to see you guys be successful uh, because I know that you guys are going to help make the world a better place for my kids. And to the extent that I can help any of you out with uh, homeschooling, the decision to homeschool or or the approach to take with homeschooling, you know, please contact me, um, you know, on Facebook or or on my website and just say, hey, Antonio. You know, I was watching Agora IO. You know, loved what you said. You know, I had a question. Let's talk about that. And I, I, I would be happy to talk to you. Uh, you know, for days about it. Um, I'm going to post here my my Facebook page. That's my Facebook page. I'm going to my education oriented page right here. I will go ahead and do my Twitter page as well. Let's see if there's any questions. <laughs> Thanks, Oliver. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, so, yeah. I mean, David said, "Let's all be friends." I completely agree. You know, we we need to support each other and help each other. There, there are so many statists out there um, who are trying to work against us. Uh, we, we really need to uh, do everything that we can to help each other out. I'm down in Austin. I moved to Austin uh, to be around more Liberty Lovers. It was either Austin or New Hampshire for me. And uh, 
there just weren't many single women in uh, New Hampshire, so I came to Austin. But uh, the one of the great things about being down here in Austin is that uh, you know there's a ton of liberty lovers, and uh, there's this group called Texans for Accountable Government, you know, with some amazing people in it, such as Heather Fazio and John Bush and whatnot. But uh, you know, they're they're always talking about the importance of, you know. You, it's not just about Ron Paul in 2008, or it's not just about a single issue, or it's not just about the Fed, although the Fed needs to end, um, be ended. But uh, you know, it's about creating voluntary, you know, associations, you know, and supporting each other. Because when when the when the crap hits the fan, and when uh, you know riots in the street begin, and the police um, are rounding up people, and people are trying to steal from each other, you know, we we need to we need to support each other. So I'm a big fan. Let's let's all you know. Let's all support each other as much as possible. Does anyone else have a question about actually homeschooling, though? Um, you know, or or how homeschooling is going to, you know, uh, move forward uh, with the liberty movement? Yeah, I mean, I would move to New Hampshire in a heartbeat if if I if I weren't a single man. Yeah, as far as like you know what actual products and whatnot are best for kids, it really depends on where they are. Uh, one of the things that that uh, I've learned in dealing with kids is uh, you know that the reading levels are so um, you know they, they 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 move in leaps and bounds. You know, so it's not the thing with education and a lot of uh, in a lot of ways, it's not you know just gradual movement. Sometimes there's giant leaps that kids take, and uh, you know if you try to give them, um, if you try to give them Hayek, you know before the, their time, they're just going to hate it. You know, so for young children, you know I would just go ahead and focus in on actually going out into the community and talking about how value is created. You know, ask well why does this person spend all their time cutting hair? Why doesn't this person spend you know their time making their own car and building their own house and you know, uh, selling their own clothes, you know, and, and that way you can talk about, you know, the sort of basics of economics, and then you can graduate them towards more complicated issues once their reading comprehension uh, skyrockets. Uh, homeschooling is going to move forward one way, you know, people are going to keep rejecting the system of, of course, of public education. We're just going, they're, they're going to reject it because they know it's a failure, and, uh, and they're going to thrive when they do it. And as other people realize that homeschooling is not just about religion, it's not just about uh, you know Latter Day Saints or or or, or evangelicals that want to teach their kids um, that 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 man walked with a dinosaur stuff like that. That you know w w once people realize that there's a million reasons to homeschool, and most of them are pretty awesome reasons, um, you know they're they're just going to start moving. But this nation is a nation of sheep. That's why there's so many people who are tied to, uh, like I was in 2008, McCain versus uh, McCain versus Obama. As long as as long as people are sheep, you know, um, we, we we can't wait around for them uh, to to do the right thing for our children. But you know, as the successes keep piling up, as you know, and the successes are just you know, they're indisputable. You know, you can't you can't deny the fact. You know, you can't. You can't argue the facts against the public education system. It's so obvious now. There's so much data on it. You just, you know, you can't make a coherent, logical argument for public education. And you can make a ton of great arguments for homeschooling because the results are fabulous. And the more that we do it, the the more and more data that's going to build up, and then people are just going to follow along. Oh yeah, United Kingdom. You know, my my goal is to is to help uh, help uh, spread homeschooling throughout the world. You know, I am a huge fan of liberty, and it's not just within the confines of the United States. Um, I think the United States is actually one of the most uh, anti-liberty nations in the world today. You know, certainly, if you if you look at you know when it comes to uh, financial manipulation and wars and torture and all that stuff. Um, yeah, but I definitely want homeschooling to spread throughout the world. I think that it it's going to do great things for the world. Um, I will go ahead and and, and uh, service people uh, throughout the globe. You know, I just happen to be focused on on the U.S. because it's sort of where the market is right now. But uh, 
you know, my next place I was going to go to was uh, India. You know, India needs a huge revolution because there's so many socialists in India. There's actually two states in India that are, are run by communists, uh, Kerala and, and, and up uh, by Bangladesh. So, um, you know, it, this, this, this movement needs to go everywhere. Um, and, and uh, you know, the persecution of, of home scores in places like uh, Spain and Germany is just completely unacceptable. And, uh, you know, the, the, the quicker we grow, the, the quicker we can attack there as well. Nullification succession, awesome. I think it's great. Um, yes, it's off topic, but, uh, you know, I, um, Peter Thiel is a guy who uh, talks to, you know, he has uh, an, an initiative called something like A Thousand Nations or Ten Thousand Nations. And, uh, and there's a guy named Michael Strong who's a hardcore libertarian who is um, very, very interested in education initiatives. I'm actually working with him on something. Um, you know, he believes in free cities, like just creating free cities around the globe. You know, and, and they do it for economic reasons, you know, and that's how they convince these uh, nation, nations to allow these uh, free cities to prop up. But, you know, the more that we can spread liberty, uh, the better. And, and if there's little enclaves of liberty here and there, um, it's, it's like homeschooling. People are going to realize that that's, that's where the opportunity is and people are going to flee to it. And, and, and if we can do that in the United States by nullifying the federal government or succeeding, seceding, then uh, I think it's great. Yeah, uh, do we need to resist federal control of education? Absolutely. There is no bigger threat <laughs> to education than federal control of it. You know, they are they are the uh, true enemy um, to everything. Um, uh, we should definitely get rid of the, the Department of Education. Um, this is a great point to talk to either Democrats or Republicans. You know, Republicans you know can't stand what Obama's. You know, they they generally buy into the. Uh, Argument against public schooling, um, although you know, oftentimes it's just a talking point to them. But with uh, Democrats, you know, all you have to do is point to No Child Left Behind. That's federal control of education. It's been a huge disaster. And uh, you know, anyone who you know, any any Democrat you know who's who's in any way has some intellectual honesty, you know, they they will admit that federal control of education has had terrible outcomes. You know, all you have to do is look at No Child Left Behind. If they believe that that Obama is going to do a better job, you just have to remind them that there's a Bush waiting in the, in the, in the wings to come in and, and implement their No Child Left Behind policy. I really wanted to go into, uh, I really wanted to go into um, you know all the benefits of homeschooling. I think that I probably talked a little bit too much about uh, you know the negatives of public schooling. I, I didn't quite know how long an hour would last. Um, but uh, my next talk on channel two about getting your children to Harvard through homeschooling uh, will go ahead and touch upon that. Um, I know that there's another great uh, there's another great session coming up after this on channel one as well. But uh, if you're a parent and you're thinking about homeschooling, uh, please please log in. Well, thanks a lot. I'm really glad everyone uh, logged in. Um, I'm going to log off now, just so that the next person uh, uh, who's uh, you know speaking after me can uh, do so. Any one of you can contact me on uh, Facebook. I'll even put my email down here for you guys, um, and, and and you guys can talk. You know, contact me if you have any questions. Definitely happy to chat with you guys. Um, you know, and and help any of you who are trying to. Uh, uh, homeschool. All right, I'm logging off now so that the next person can log in, and I'll be going to channel two where you can also uh, listen to me talk about getting your kid into Harvard. And thanks, everyone. I appreciate it.